Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson, and welcome to Design Dive here on AI and Games. In this episode, let's talk AlphaStar, DeepMind's Grandmaster level AI StarCraft II player. AlphaStar made headlines throughout 2019 as the competence of the system grew, first defeating pro StarCraft players Tielo and Mana, followed by playing in public matchmaking on the Battle.net European servers, allowing it to climb to the top 0.15% of all players. The big question I hear a lot is how can the games industry capitalise on this and build their own deep learning AI players? But it isn't as straightforward as that, and despite the real innovation and excitement around AlphaStar, this isn't going to have an immediate impact on the way game AI is developed, or at least not in the way you think. And in this video, I'm going to explain why. Let me stress that this video isn't intended to speak ill of DeepMind and their work. AlphaStar is an incredible achievement that, even in academic circles, still felt like it was years away. But rather, I want to… temper people's enthusiasm a little bit. The media sensationalism of AI often means understanding the capability of these systems is actually quite difficult to grasp. But the bigger issue is that the way in which AlphaStar is built does not make it easy to adapt and translate to a game development pipeline. So let's talk about what this all really means for the video game industry in the short term, rather than treating this as the next big innovation that will transform into Skynet and eventually kill us all. On that note, it's legit both funny and depressing how everyone in their auntie knows what Skynet is, yet Terminator movies are not doing well at the box office. I won't be talking about how AlphaStar works in this video, because I did that already over in episode 48 of the main show, so if you want to get a grasp of what's actually happening under the hood of these StarCraft players, go watch that video first. Plus, I do make reference to some of the points raised in that video, but hopefully it's all easy for you to follow along with. Let's get to it. The first big issue here is that the games industry needs to see the benefits of adopting this approach for non-player character AI before it embraces it. This isn't the first time machine learning has reared its head offering to fix problems for the video games industry. In fact, there was an initial exploration of machine learning back in the late 90s and early 2000s, which led to games like the original Total War, as well as black and white using neural networks and genetic algorithms, but to mixed success. One of the big reasons that machine learning died out was the lack of control or authority designers and programmers have once the systems are trained to solve the task at hand. Deep learning is creating complex artificial neural networks that carry thousands if not millions of connections that are all numeric weights. Training the connection weights is what gives the system intelligence, but when you read that as a human, it's just numbers. Lots and lots and lots of numbers. So if you build an AI player using deep learning and it does something weird, you can't really crack it open to debug it. You need to isolate what's wrong in the design of the network, the learning process or the training data that may have caused this erroneous behaviour and then retrain it. Then, if you want to create AI that cater to particular situations or configurations, you'd need to build the training process to reflect that. This isn't remotely accessible or friendly to game designers who want control over how an AI character will behave within the game and are working with the programming team to make that a reality. If you consider, say, episode 47 of AI in Games where I looked at Halo Wars 2, that whole system is built in a modular data-driven fashion that allows designers to have a huge amount of control. Right now, deep learning technologies do not cater to that level of interaction and oversight for a designer to work with it. It's why behaviour trees are so pervasive in game AI. They are arguably the most accessible for both designers and developers, allowing each team to focus on their specialism without stepping on the toes of one another. This isn't to say machine learning isn't going to have an impact within the industry itself, but more specifically, I don't see it being used pervasively for in-game behaviour. Sure, we've seen the likes of Forza Horizon and MotoGP adopt it for their opposing racers, but those are very bespoke situations that actually cater quite nicely given the problem space, and we will talk about those one day in the future. The industry, however, is still evolving and adapting to this surge in machine learning, and while big publishers are investing in their own AI R&D teams, that isn't reflected in even AAA studios. Over time, we're going to see deep learning used more and more in games, but not in the ways you might think, and I'd argue rarely for in-game character behaviour. The second big issue is that, irrespective of the technology's capabilities, the requirements for training AlphaStar don't allow for it to be easily replicated for games in active development. As mentioned in my other video, AlphaStar's first phase of learning is achieved by watching and then mimicking behaviours from match replays of human players. So this is a chicken and egg problem, given if you want to train super intelligent AI in your game, you need to have existing examples of high-level play that it can replicate through supervised learning, 
But if you want that training data, then you either need to have expert players playing the game before release, or build a separate AI player to bootstrap the machine learning player by creating examples for it to learn from, and that kind of defeats the point. AlphaStar benefits heavily from the ecosystem that StarCraft exists within. The game has been out for nearly a decade and is relatively bug-free. It's been a popular esports title for several years, plus Blizzard's cult of personality helps maintain an active and lively fan base around their products. This means lots of data already exists for AlphaStar to work with. Now, all that said, AlphaStar is still quite a fickle system. The two versions of the AI player were built against two specific versions of StarCraft II, with version 1 that defeated TLO and Mana on 4.6.2, and version 2 that achieved Grandmaster rank on 4.9.2. Now, the unspoken problem here is that any changes made to the game design that influence the multiplayer meta in any significant way will break AlphaStar. The reinforcement learning trains the bots against that current meta, and that means it can't just adapt to the changes brought on by the patch, you'll need to retrain it. Even the human expert play it's bootstrapped against might not even prove applicable anymore in this context. I can't say with any certainty, but there's a small chance that already, as of version 4.10 of StarCraft 2, AlphaStar might not be able to play as well as it once did. The third and most critical element that prevents AlphaStar being adopted en masse is cost. Training the AlphaStar agents is an incredibly expensive process. You need to have dedicated processing systems for the training to run in a large, distributed, heterogeneous fashion. DeepMind utilized Google's own cloud infrastructure to achieve this, and the training was executed on their Cloud Tensor Processing Units, or TPUs. These are custom-developed, application-specific integrated circuits, or ASICs, designed to help accelerate machine learning training and inference. The most recent version of AlphaStar from November 2019 trained on 384 TPU v3 accelerators for a period of 44 days. Now, if you consider Google's public pricing model for using these TPUs, which runs at around $8 an hour for a single unit, then even a naive estimation of cost amounts to $3,072 per hour, $73,728 a day, and $3.2 million in total. Though I'm sure DeepMind got a heavy discount. Now, you might think this isn't a big deal when some AAA productions have budgets in the tens, if not hundreds, of millions of dollars, but three and a half million to train your AI is a ridiculous amount of money. Sure, publishers like EA, Take-Two, Ubisoft, or Activision might have that kind of cash available, but this is just the cost of running the training, not the staff, the infrastructure, the development time, and all the other critical parts of game development. Bear in mind this is but one tiny part of a much larger puzzle when building a game of a scale akin to StarCraft. Plus, as cool as this ridiculous expenditure is, DeepMind are actually hemorrhaging money right now, posting losses for Alphabet, the umbrella company of Google, exceeding $1 billion in the last three years. This technology is still in an experimental stage, and without further investigation, it is not yet stable enough for a AAA publisher to take it seriously. Perhaps even more critically, this excludes all but the top 2% of game studios and publishers, even if they could afford it. The training costs suggested here are bigger than most development budgets for a game. This technology can't permeate throughout the industry if it costs that much to train it. And of course, if you need to train it again, as your design needs forced you to reconsider something, boom, that's more money being thrown at Google to solve the problem. Alternatively, a company invests in their own deep learning infrastructure or use another provider. But in any case, money, money, money. I will stress, this isn't just an issue of unabated capitalism. The issue of data and compute resource to train deep learning systems is not a solved issue and is one of the larger problems being addressed not just in research of AI methodologies, but even hardware companies such as Intel that are building the next generation of compute hardware to deliver training and inference of machine learning cheaper and faster than is currently possible. Now, while I'm stressing that AlphaStar isn't going to change gaming just yet, that's not to say that machine learning is not having an impact within the games industry. As I mentioned earlier, the initial enthusiasm for machine learning largely petered out by the mid-2000s, but the recent deep learning revolution has seen renewed interest. But this new and more concerted effort has been explored to address issues beyond just the creation of traditional AI players. EA's Seed Division revealed their work in 2018 training deep learning agents to play Battlefield, as well as exploring imitation learning from human play samples to bootstrap AI behaviours. Meanwhile, Ubisoft's La Forge Research Lab in Montreal is experimenting with machine learning for testing gameplay systems, AI assistants that support programmers in committing bug-free code, 
motion matching animation frameworks for character behaviours and lip syncing for dialogue in different languages. Plus, the most obvious applications in data sciences are long established at this point, as analytics teams use machine learning to learn more about how people play their games and provide insight into changes that could be made going forward. I mean, let's look on the bright side. I'm going to have plenty more to talk about on this channel in the coming years. Thanks for watching this episode on Design Dive. I figured it was worth giving my two cents and explaining why we shouldn't be expecting deep learning to invade all of game AI just yet. Hope you found it interesting. If you've got questions, comments, or just flat out disagree with me, then slap that down in the comments, and once I've had enough to drink, I'll maybe go take a look. Don't forget, you can help to support my work by joining the AI in Games Patreon or by becoming a YouTube member. Just like patrons Scott Reynolds, Ricardo Montero, and Victor Viktorov have done right here. Plus all the other lovely folk you see right here in the credits. Take care folks, I'll be back.